Welcome back to Melon Company. Today I am continuing the story of Gina McKee. One night, Gina had her father over for dinner. They were having a pleasant evening. Her father asked, have you figured out what you want to do next? I still think college would be a good next step for you. Gina had still not decided what she wanted to do. She knew she had to decide, as well as find a source of income. Gina told her father, I've been considering it, but I also know I need to find a way to pay my bills. My savings are slowly, but surely depleting. Why don't you just get a gig as a freelancer? That way you can earn money and still do college. You do have many skills I know you could put to use. Gina liked this idea. So she took on a job as a freelance writer and enrolled in college. When she got her acceptance letter back, she immediately shared the news with her father. He was very excited and happy for her. He told her to work hard and keep on top of her studies. Gina was very busy trying to balance her new life. College was hard all on its own, let alone having a job on top of it. She spent every waking moment either doing homework Going to class, or doing work for her job. One evening, she was in the library working on her homework for her classical music class, when suddenly a fellow student started talking to her. I got that was class too. Need any help? No, I'm good. Nearly finished, she replied. Join? The boy said. I can't. I'm busy. I still have more homework, as well as a work project I have to finish, Gina replied, disheartened. Well, I guess I'll be seeing you around. My name's Theodore, by the way. It's nice to meet you. He looked at her, waiting for an answer to what her name was. Gina. Gina McKee. With that, he smiled and waved goodbye. Later one morning, while Gina was having breakfast at the cafe, she saw Theodore walk through the door. After getting himself a drink, he sat down next to her. What are you having? He said, asked. Oh, you know, just a scone and a cappuccino. This place is the best around town, she answered casually. Speaking of the best, I know this really great restaurant that makes the best grilled chicken ever. Would you maybe like to go try it and catch a movie after? Tonight? Like a date? You know, sorry, I'm much too busy. I still have a term paper to write tonight. Uh, well that's too bad. Well, I'm off to class now. See you around. With that, he left. That night, she wrote her paper. She couldn't help but feel that maybe she should have said yes and gone on the date. After that night, she made a decision to try and make more time to do fun and relaxing things for herself. She started taking Teddy for evening strolls, she learned how to paint. tried baking sugar
well as planning a flower garden. Trying new things and spending time with Teddy made her happier. She felt more true to herself. Several weeks passed by since her last encounter with Theodore. It's almost the end of the semester, with term papers and presentations due as well as exams around the corner. Despite all this, Gina still made time to take Teddy to the dog park each evening. As she watched Teddy play, she was greeted by a friendly boxer. She petted the dog and looked for a collar to see what the dog's name was. Bacon! Well, that's an interesting name, Gina said after reading the dog's t- name tag. Oh, look, you found her, um, said a familiar man's voice. Bacon, you can't just run off like that. <laughs> Thank you, by the way, he continued. Gina turned and saw it was Theodore. You're welcome. I didn't know you had a dog. She's beautiful and quite friendly, Gina said to Theodore. Thanks. She is. Do you have a dog too? Yeah, he's over there. His name is Teddy. He's my best friend. Oh, nice. He looks like a lot of fun. Gina stood and gestured to a nearby bench. They both walked over and sat. So I have to ask, why bacon? Gina questioned. Theodore replied, when she was a puppy, my mom would share a piece of bacon with her every time she cooked it. She would wag her stump and do the kidney bee dance. It was so cute that my mother and I agreed that she must be named after her favorite treat. Bacon! Gina chuckled and smiled. They continued to chat as the dogs played. As the evening grew darker, Theodore turned and asked Gina a question. So I am wondering if you want to go as my date to a party tomorrow night. Gina paused and thought for a moment, then with a smile replied, Yes, I can do that. With that, they exchanged numbers and went home. The next night, they headed to the club where the party was being held. Theodore introduced his Gina to his friends. All was going well until a girl walked up to Gina and shoved her. The girl yelled at her. You! You're the daughter of Professor McKee! I recognize you! Ugh! He's always telling the class how amazing his daughter is and how we should aim to be as smart as you. I hate you! With that, the girl threw a drink on Gina. Embarrassed, Gina ran away. She found herself outside the club crying. later, Theodore found her. He tried to make her laugh. And comforted her. After that night, Gina and Theodore began spending a lot of time together. They would go on dog walks, they would grab drinks at the cafe, they even had movie nights together. One night, their movie night became a cuddle session on the couch.
that night, as they said goodbye, Peter Bador paused at the door. He said, I've never been happier. Gina, I think I love you. He kissed her. Gina's first kiss ever. All seemed that it was going perfectly for Gina until she received her grade. Gina had not reached her standard of a perfect straight A's. Will the drop in Gina's grades have her reeling backwards back into a life of nothing but work, or will she decide to embrace this new way of life, even if it is a bit messy? Find out next time as we continue Gina's story. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and if you desire to see more of Gina's story, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. Today's Milling Company issued assignment is a moment of self-care. Keep making the world a sweeter place. Bye!